Come on in, help me sing. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. I dare you to declare it all over the building. Lord, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Sing it again, sing it again, Lord. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are good and your mercy. Oh, people from every nation. From generation. We worship you. Sing hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. Worship you for who you are. Oh, and you are good. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You don't act like you believe it. Do you know the Lord is good? Hallelujah. Oh, sing it again. Say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Oh, There's nobody like you in this place, Lord. You are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Oh, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Oh, people from every nation. People from every nation. From generation. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you for who you are. Oh, we worship you. Sing hallelujah. Oh, we worship you for who you are. And you are good. Come on, clap your hands if you believe it today. Let the high praises of God be heard. Oh, come on, it's all right to shout hallelujah. And sing, you are. Yes, you are. You are good. Just let the music play as you rejoice in the Lord. It's okay to leap for joy and wave your hands in the air if you know the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Help us lift up the name of the Lord today. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. Oh, come on, if you know the Lord is good. Help us sing, you are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You're so good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. So good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. Oh, oh. You are good all the time.
Just lift your hands all over the building. It's an act of surrender today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We serve a great God. He's a name above all names. Hallelujah. And we just want to declare the greatness of our God. The song just says, How great is our God. Sing with me how great yes. is our God. Hallelujah. All will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, everybody knows that song. Sing it with us today. How great, how great is our God. Is our Our God, our God, all will see, all see how, great, how, great how great is our God. Is our God. Hallelujah. Oh, one more time, sing it. How great, how great is our God. Wonder, can we get April to sing? You're the name above all names. Hallelujah. Oh, you're the name above all names. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Oh, my heart will sing. How great is I? with us.
music. How great. Give him a great praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe that this morning? Hallelujah. No, 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 no. How many really believe? Hallelujah. How great is our God. If it had not been, y'all kind of quiet in here. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, yeah, I can't testify for nobody else, but I can tell you for myself, he's a great God. He's an omnipotent God. He's an all-seeing God. Everything that I've ever needed, I've gotten from the Lord. And when I think about the goodness, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all He's done for me, I can sing just like the just like the singer said, mm, "How great is our God." How great is our God, and all will see how great, yeah. how great oh. is our God, oh. Oh. how great is our God, yeah, why don't you sing with me, how great. God in heaven, we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, not for who we are, but for what you have done. We thank you for opening our eyes this morning. We thank you for allowing us to come inside these four holy walls one more time. Now, as we come, oh God, we ask that you will speak to us and speak through us. Use me in this service that something that is said here might be food to a hungry soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand? All of our first time visitors, the 11th chapter. And I'm going to lift up one verse. Matthew 11 and 28. One verse. Everybody ready? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I 
will give you rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Just for a moment, how to handle what's handling you. How to handle what's handling you. First thing we have to realize is that everybody in here, no matter where we are in our age bracket, our socioeconomic situation, where we live, where we work, we all have issues. We all have burdens. And we all have trials and tribulations. And the fact of the matter is, is not whether or not you have these things. It's how you handle these things. To be honest, if we, if we just look back five, six, seven days at the beginning of last week, some of us had some issues, some situations to occur in our lives, and it made us wonder how in the world Am I going to make it? Am I the only one in here? I mean, we came across some folks that disturbed our peace of mind. There were some issues that happened on the job make us wonder if we're in the right place. Some of us was at home. I, well, let me read that line. And there were some things that went on and it made us wonder what in the world is going on. But I've come to tell you today that if you hold on and hold out, no matter what the situation looks like, smells like, tastes like, feels like, there is an answer for every situation. When this, when, this, when, this, when this chapter opens up, it begins with the story of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is in prison. Now, I want you to understand why this is so important. John the Baptist is in prison, and he's questioning now uh, his faith in who Jesus is. Watch now. John the Baptist in prison sends out his disciples and say, go find Jesus and ask him, is he the one? Now, what's so peculiar about this is the fact that if you know anything about John the Baptist, if there's anybody in the Bible that ought to know who Jesus is, It ought to be John the Baptist. Because before his birth, even while he was in his mother's womb, when his mom and Jesus' mom came into contact with each other, something happened. Now, 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 now watch it now, watch it. But John the Baptist, who knew Jesus from before birth is now asking the question, are you the one? Aren't we like that sometimes? We've been in and around the church all our lives, but certain things happen to us, and we question our faith. And can I tell you, ain't nothing wrong with questioning your faith every now and then. Because if you question your you, let me see, how can I put this? You can't question something that you don't have. Hello? Somebody say, well, you, 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 you question your faith, you ain't got none. No, I, I, I disagree with that. Person who doesn't have faith 
never wonders what's wrong, never wonders about anything, just go on about what they're doing. But a man that has faith will question sometimes. And see, what happens is this. We have, we have been uh, so concerned about the statement, the size of a mustard seed. But the word does not say the size of a mustard seed. He says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, what's the difference, preacher? Well, the difference is, it's not the size that we're talking about. It's not the depth that we're talking about. It's talking about what faith will do if you have it. Hello, somebody. Because, because, you ever seen a mustard seed? Mustard seed ain't but that big. But if you plant it in the ground, have you seen the results of a mustard seed? That's what we're talking about, gaining the results of a mustard seed. If you will allow your faith to grow. And listen, faith is a muscle. Without Without faith, it's impossible to please God, but you've got to know how to work your faith so that your faith will increase, so that your faith will strengthen itself. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to encourage yourself. Listen, listen, there's three, three, three things, three, three, three little things I want to, I want to talk about and then I'm going to get you, get out of the way. First thing is, when we have, when we have issues in we have to learn to do three things. First thing we need to learn how to do is take our burdens, our issues, our worries, our situations, our problems to the right place. Amen. Hello? Amen. A whole lot of us have things that's going wrong in our lives. I'm talking about me too. My shoes are getting tight. And we don't go to the right place with it. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Can I tell you, number one, fretting, worrying about your problem is not the right place to go. Amen. Hello? Most people take their burdens to worry and, and get so confused about what to do with it. But can I tell you that Worry is the opposite of what faith is. I, I used to teach a new members class, and I, I, I said this, and I'll say it again, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. If you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Because the Bible says be anxious of nothing but in all things with prayer and supplication. We've got to make our requests known unto the Father. And see, what happens is God knows we have issues, we have problems, but he wants us to be able to bring them to him and not just rely on ourselves. Hello. And, 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 and as much as our friends mean to us, as, as, as much, as, as, much as, as friendship we have, we got to realize that that we can't take our burdens to our friends. Because friends have problems too. You remember, you remember the story of Job? Job's friends came to him. I, I, I like what our pastor pointed out, and I've, 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 been, I've, been, I've been leaning on that. Everybody said the three people that came to visit him wasn't his friends. But I came to tell you, when you're in a time of trouble, even though they may not have the right philosophy, they may not have the right theology, but those who are closest to you, your real friends, you want to find out who your real friends is, get in trouble. Amen, Walls. But at the same time, friends don't always know how to handle your problems. Some may try, some may try, some may, some may let you know I got problems too. 
but we have to learn how to take our burdens to the right place. Can I tell you something else? We got to stop running. Hello. From our problems. If you want to get rid of whatever it is that's bothering you, you can't run from it. Hello. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of Huh? When, 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 when the word says put on the whole arm of God, it didn't say nothing about running shoes. Hello? Didn't say nothing about taking flight and going somewhere. We've got to learn that running from our problems actually moves us away from God. Let me help you out. You remember the story of Jonah? Jonah was given an assignment and, and, and said, go to Nineveh. And, 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 and Jonah said, no, I'm not going to go to Nineveh because I know what the result is going to be. So Jonah decided to run from God, to flee from his issues, to run away from his problem. Can I tell you what happened to Jonah? The word said. Jonah went down to buy a ticket. Once he bought the ticket, he went down, y'all not listening to me, to get in the ship. Once he got in the ship and the ship set sail, he went down to the bottom of the ship. While the ship was sailing, he was he was down in the bottom of a storm, arose, and everybody was worried. Everybody was upset. Nobody knew what was going on, and Jonah was asleep. They had to wake Jonah up, and Jonah had to admit what all of us have to admit. We don't want to do it. We, 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 we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't want to do it, but we have to admit sometimes we are our own problems. Well... Bottom line is, when they found out who Jonah was, Jonah was cast over out of the ship and went down in the water. Once he went down in the water, God had prepared a fish from, for, for Jonah, and Jonah ended up down in the belly of the fish. All I'm trying to tell you is when you run from, pro from problems, you run from God, all you doing is going down. You get down to lying. You get down to stealing. You get down to, you just get low down. I, I, I wish I had one witness in here. You, you, you can't run from your problems. Can I tell you something else you can't do? Fighting won't help you. Y'all still looking at me crazy. A lot of people try to live in denial. A lot of people try, try, try to live in denial and will fight uh, 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 when you try to point out what's right. You remember, you remember, you remember, I'm almost through, you remember Peter? Peter was the one that said, I'll die for you. Peter, Peter, Peter was the one, Peter was the one who said, who said, Lord, I, uh, God, Jesus told him, so you're going to deny me. And he said, I, I'll die for you, but I'll never deny you. And remember what happened when they came and they took Jesus, and, 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 and Jesus was in captivity and going through from, from, from jail to jail, from judgment hall to judgment hall. Peter went outside and warmed himself by the fire. And somebody said, somebody said, hey, wait a minute. You, you look like one of them. Uh, you got the wrong man. Uh, <laughs> I ain't the one. Come on. But look at that suit you got on. You look, I don't care.
Well, well, she said, but I, I hear you talking. You, you talk like a preacher. You, you walk like a preacher. You look like a preacher. Can I tell you, even a preacher get mad sometimes? Sometimes we, we, we deny our problems, and, 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 and you can't, you can't, I never will forget uh, junior high school. We used to have, y'all call it middle school now. Junior high school, I went to, I went to Capitol Junior, and, and uh, the, uh, the assistant principal, bless his heart, I can't think of his name right now, but he, Charlie Stevenson, y'all don't know. But Mr. Stevenson saw me uh, in class one day, and y'all know I was kind of, you know, I wasn't always what I am today. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And he, he stopped me, the bell had rung, and he said, he said, he said, son, you got some, you got some problems? I said, sir, he said, the bell rung. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, what you doing out in the hall? I said, I'm on my way to class. You got some problems? I said, I said no, I ain't got no. He said, yeah, you got some problems. You just don't know about it. <laughs> all of us have issues. All of us, are, all of us have problems. All of us have, have concerns. All of us have burdens. But the thing is taking them to the right place. Yeah. We've got to learn that the Father will always be there to help us. Notice the invitation that he gives in, in Matthew. He says, come. The Lord throws open an open door. Uh, he allows us to come in to him. He, he loves us. He, he wants us to come in. But how many of us always decide before we go to him, we're going to go to someone else? Second thing, second thing, second thing. Second thing that we do is, 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 is we try to transfer our burdens to somebody else. You know, we'll, we, we'll always try to put uh, the fault, the blame, the issue on somebody else, thinking that it's going to get us uh, in a better situation. We're going to be able to get out of it because we've proven somebody else uh, uh, wrong. But can I tell you that trying to get somebody else uh, to take on your issue ain't going to help? Jesus, 1 Peter 5 and 7, Jesus walked through loneliness, through need, through, through difficulty and death. He's been hated. He was loved. Uh, but guess what? He never blamed anybody else. Whenever the situation came, Jesus stood toe to toe and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he got, he, 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 he made it so plain, he said, no man can come to the Father except they come by me. If you're, going, if, you're going, if, if you're going to try and transfer your burdens to somebody, don't you think you ought to try to transfer them to the right person? Huh? Stop, 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 stop thinking, well, I can go, I can go to mama and, and mama will help me. I can go to daddy. Daddy can help me. I, I, I go to sister. I go to brother, I go to, I, I, I go to uncle, uncle, somebody always looking for someone else to help you. But I come to tell you, we, we, we look at all of the wrong faces, thinking that there's going to be someone else who's got a little bit more, someone else that knows a little bit better, someone else that, 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 that has a little bit more influence that can help us. But I, I need to let you know, there is only one person that can help you, that can, that can do something about your situation. 
And we've got to learn how to cast our cares upon him. Why? Because he does care for us. Huh? When, we learn, when we learn how to stop trying to get somebody else to help us, try, stop trying to get somebody else to assume a, a, a position of authority over us so that they can do something for us and learn how to really take our burdens to Jesus. Not only does he know what we face, he can change what we face. He's able to do exceedingly. I wish I had just one witness in here. And abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or imagine, but guess what? It's according, once again, to the power that works within us. If we don't have any power, ain't nothing he can do. So sometimes, sometimes we have to take an introspective view of our lives and say, well, Lord, if, 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 if it's not working, is it me? Could it be the fact that I don't have enough power on the inside of me? Could it be that, 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 that somewhere along the line I've allowed my fire to be put out? Could it be that I've, I've placed my trust in the wrong person, in the wrong place, but now I've got to learn to put my trust in the right provisions, the right provider? Sometimes you've got to understand that God will remove your burden. Sometimes God will, will come in and instantaneously remove whatever that is that is bothering you. Sometimes we can pray to God and get an instantaneous answer to our prayer. Sometimes, see, God moves in, in three ways. Sometimes he'll move it quickly. Sometimes he'll move it slowly. Sometimes he won't even move it at all. But what happens is he gives us grace. I wish I had just one hundred grace. For the Bible says that my grace is sufficient for you. We have to learn sometimes that, 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 that every, every, every burden, every issue, every problem is not from the enemy. But it's something that God has allowed to come in contact with us to make us stronger. I wish I had a witness in here. I told you that faith is a muscle. And sometimes you've got to exercise your muscles to get a little bit stronger. Sometimes you have to realize that he's not going to put more on you than you are able to handle. So when it seems like there's burdens placed in your life, and it seems like you're all alone. And it seems like you can't find no help. You got to realize that all of my help comes from the Lord. And I don't believe the Lord brought me this far just to leave me alone. I wish I had one witness in here. But sometimes he'll relieve your burden. See, there have been times when God's going to take the burdens off your shoulders. But then there are times when God will still place those burdens on your shoulders. But if you trust in him, he's going to strengthen your shoulders. I wish I had a witness in here. Yeah. And then sometimes he'll rest you in your burdens. You see, sometimes he'll just give you rest. Some folks don't understand how it is. You got problems on one hand. You got problems on the left side. But you can still go in your bedroom and close your eyes and go to sleep. Some people don't understand how it is that it seems like trouble is about to overcome you. But you learned how to lean 
sing this. And depend on Jesus. Can I get a witness? I feel pretty good right here, but can I tell you, uh, there was a woman, uh, I like to watch westerns, I like to watch the cowboys, I like to watch the shoot 'em ups and I was watching the shoot 'em up one time, and there was a lady uh, who was riding a stagecoach coming from Montana, and it was cold, and it was snowing on the outside, and she had a little bitty baby, and the baby was cold, and the woman was so cold, riding on the stagecoach, that she was almost passing out, and the driver of the stagecoach saw what was happening to her, so he stopped the stagecoach, he took the baby, put the baby under the seat, and took the lady, and laid her out on the ground, out on the cold ground, and he got back up on the stagecoach, and he began to slowly ride off well when the lady realized what the stagecoach driver was doing she kind of woke up a little bit she kind of found a little strength she didn't understand how she could be left out in the cold with her baby going away from her but she got up out the cold didn't have no shoes on her, but she started running in the snow. Uh, Y'all don't hear me here. But started running after the stagecoach, uh, and the stagecoach driver uh, kind of looked over his shoulder uh, and saw her running. Uh, so he slowed down a little bit, uh, and she was running after the stagecoach, uh, and he slowed down a little bit more uh, until she caught up with the stagecoach. Uh, and when she caught up with the stagecoach, she looked down, uh, looked up at the man, uh, and the man looked down at her, uh, and she was mad and couldn't understand uh, why he drove off like that. Uh, and he looked down at her and said, uh, you was cold, uh, you were dying, uh, and I didn't know what else to do, uh, but I didn't know one thing, uh, if I got your blood circulating, uh, if I got you to move, if I got you to do something, I knew you'd be all right. Y'all don't hear me. Sometimes it looks like the stage culture has driven off from us, but it ain't nothing but God trying to get us to move. Every now and then, uh, you ought to be able uh, to get up on your feet, uh, shake your head, uh, pat your feet, uh, do a little something uh, so God uh, can energize you, uh, so that God uh, will get you to understand uh, you've got everything uh, that you need, uh, everything uh, that you you need God's already given it to you so why don't you work it begin to work your arms begin to work your feet begin to wave your hands let somebody know I am a child of God although I move so slow I'm gonna stay right here y'all don't hear me until the spirit comes and I'm gonna move at his command you want to know how to handle what's handling you take your burdens to the Lord and then leave them there he will I said he will he will he'll work it out anybody in here know he'll work it out he's a heart fixer a mind regulator he's able I said he's able how do you know he's able I've tried him out for myself I found out he's all right I said he's all right 
Is it anybody in here ever tried Jesus? Don't try to fool me now. If you tried him and you know he's all right, shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and tell him he's all right. I know he's all right. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. Oh, the joy. Anybody got joy? Anybody got joy? Somebody said serving the Lord is going to pay off after a while. But I got news for you. Serving the Lord is paying off for me right now. Because I got joy down on the inside. I got joy. Get all in my feet sometimes. I got joy, get in my hands, I got joy, make me want to run, ain't nobody behind me, make me smile, when it ain't nothing funny, make me cry, nobody bothering me, I've got joy, anybody got joy? I tell you, I got joy. I got joy. And the one thing about the joy that I had, this world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Come hell or high water, I'm going to serve him. I'm going to serve him. Anybody going to serve him? Anybody going to serve him? Have you made up in your mind? Troubles will come on every hand. But I, 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 I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There, there, there may be somebody. Let me see, Sean. Though the storm keep on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, mm -hmm. The waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But this is what I like about it. In the word of God, I've got an anchor. 
And it keeps me steadfast and unmovable. The storms don't cease Just in case the winds keep on blowing in my life My soul has been anchored in the Lord Because he holds me fast So dark the day Clouds in the sky I know he's alright Cause Jesus is not My soul is anchored My soul is anchored My soul is anchored My, my Listen, you press me down But Jesus picks me up He's always by my side when my going gets rough. You can talk about me as much as you please. The more you talk about me, I'm going to get on my knees. Because my soul is a hangout. My soul is a hangout. My soul is a hangout. My, my, my. My soul is anchored, yeah, yeah. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody may be here today who has not yet received Jesus in their life. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The invitation is extended. If you don't have a church home, if you're out of the fellowship, if you're not in the ark of safety, if you know you're not where you should be, if you know you're not who you could be, if you know you're not, why don't you come to Jesus? This is the opportunity of a lifetime. This step this morning can change your life for the better. Don't let it be said I waited too late. Don't let it be said I was ashamed because of the people if you're ashamed to own me in front of man, I'll be ashamed to own you before my father. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say it, say it, say it. My soul, my soul, my soul, yeah. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My soul is anchored. My, 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 my. My soul is anchored.
Every head by every eye closed. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this blessed opportunity and privilege. We pray now, God, that your word does not go out void, but that it will do what it has been assigned to do. Touch our hearts, our minds. Allow us, O oh God, to become the people that you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.